Today is the 19th of August, 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. We had a really good weekend down here in West Yorkshire, down here in West Yorkshire, up here in West Yorkshire, somewhere in West Yorkshire. We had a really good weekend in West Yorkshire. Um, some time off, some time to catch up, um, and a couple of really good preaching sessions on prayer yesterday. Um, so I hope that your weekend was as blessed and fulfilled as mine was. If you're joining us for the very first time, let me say welcome. And just let me take the chance to explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. But having explained how it all works, let's start today's leg of walking the way with our opening prayer. So let's pray, shall we? Father God, in the meeting of our lives, be the focus of all that we are. In the prayers that we make, in the reading of your word, speak to us, encourage us, remind us that we are forgiven in Jesus. Lord, in the meeting of our lives, be the focus of all that we are. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we read about Elijah being taken up into heaven. But we'll see you on the other side. Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. Loving God, open up your word to us today. Speak to us through the words on the page and the words that we hear. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the New International Version, and we're beginning with 2 Kings 2 and 3. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha answered, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets of Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, 
Suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's coat that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the river. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. The company of prophets from Jericho who were watching said, The spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Look, they said, we your servants have fifty able men. Let them go and look for your master. Perhaps the Spirit of the Lord has picked him up and set him down on some mountain or on some valley. No, Elisha replied, do not send them. But they persisted until he was too embarrassed to refuse, so he said, send them. And they sent fifty men who searched for three days but did not find him. When they returned to Elisha, who was staying in Jericho, he said to them, Didn't I tell you not to go? The people of the city said to Elisha, Look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, This is what the Lord says, I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And the water has remained pure to this day according to the word Elisha had spoken. From there Elisha went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, some boys came out of the town and jeered at him. Get out of here, Baldy, they said. Get out of here, Baldy. And he turned round, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of the boys. And he went on to Mount Carmel and from there returned to Samaria. Joram, son of Ahab, became king in Israel and Samaria in the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and he reigned twelve years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father and mother had done. He got rid of the sacred stone of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, which he had caused Israel to commit. He did not turn away from them. Now Misha, king of Moab, raised sheep, and he had to pay the king of Israel a tribute of a hundred thousand lambs and the wool of a hundred thousand rams. But after Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So at that time, King Joram sent out from Samaria and mobilized all Israel. He also sent this message to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against Moab? I will go with you, he replied. I am as you are. My people are your people, my horses are your horses. By what route shall we attack, he asked. Through the desert of Edom, he answered. So the king of Israel set out with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. After a roundabout march of seven days, the army had no more water for themselves or for the animals with them. What? exclaimed the king of Israel. Has the Lord called us three kings together, only to deliver us into the hands of Moab? But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there no prophet of the Lord here, through whom we may inquire of the Lord? The officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, son of Shaphat, is here. He used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, Why do you want to involve me? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. No, the king of Israel answered, because it was the Lord that called us three kings together to deliver us into the hands of Moab. Elisha said, As surely as the Lord Almighty lives whom I serve, if I did not have respect for the presence of Jehoshaphat king of Judah, I would not pay any attention to you. But now bring me a harpist. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came on Elisha and he said, this is what the Lord says. I will fill this valley with pools of water. For this is what the Lord says. You will see neither rain nor wind. Yet this valley will be filled with water. 
and you, your cattle, and your other animals will drink. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. He will also deliver Moab into your hands. You will overthrow every fortified city and every major town. You will cut down every good tree, stop up all the springs, and ruin every good field with stones. The next morning at the time for offering the sacrifice, there it was, water flowing from the direction of Edom, and the land was filled with water. Now all the Moabites had heard that the kings had come to fight against them, so every man, young and old, who could bear arms was called up and stationed on the border. When they got up early in the morning, the sun was shining on the water. To the Moabites across the way, the water looked red, like blood. That's blood, they said. The kings must have fought and slaughtered each other. Now to the plunder, Moab. But when the Moabites came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and fought them until they fled. Then the Israelites invaded the land and slaughtered the Moabites. They destroyed the towns, and every man threw a stone on every good field until it was covered. They stopped up all the springs and cut down every good tree. Only ker was left with its stones in place. But men were armed with slings surrounded it and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw the battle had gone against him, he took with him seven hundred swordsmen to break through to the king of Edom, but they failed. Then he took his firstborn son, who was to succeed him as king, and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. The fury against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. Ecclesiastes 8 Who is like the wise? Who knows the explanation of things? A person's wisdom brightens their face and changes its hard appearance. Obey the king's command, I say, because you took an oath before God. Do not be in a hurry to leave the king's presence. Do not stand up for a bad cause, for he will do whatever he pleases. Since the king's word is supreme, who can say to him, What are you doing? Whoever obeys his command will come to no harm, and the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. For there is a proper time and a procedure for every matter, though a person may be weighed down by misery. Since no one knows the future, who can tell someone else what is to come? As no one has power over the wind to contain it, so no one has the power over the time of their death. As no one is discharged in the time of war, so wickedness will not release those who practice it. All this I saw, as I applied my mind to everything done under the sun. There is a time when a man lords it over others to his own hurt. Then too I saw the wicked buried. Those who used to come and go from the holy place and receive praise in the cities where they did this. This too is meaningless. When the sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out, people's hearts are filled with schemes to do wrong. Although a wicked person who commits a hundred crimes may live a long time, I know that it will go better with those who fear God, who are reverent before Him. But because the wicked do not fear God, it will not go well with them, and their days will not lengthen like a shadow. There is something else meaningless that occurs on earth. The righteous who get what the wicked deserve, and the wicked who get what the righteous deserve. This too is meaningless. So I commend the enjoyment of life, because there is nothing better for a person under the sun than to eat, drink, and be glad. Then joy will accompany them in their toll all the days of the life God has given them under the sun. When I applied my mind to know wisdom and to observe the labor that is done on earth, people getting no sleep day or night, then I saw all that God had done. No one can comprehend what goes on under the sun. Despite all their efforts to search it out, no one can discover its meaning. Even if the wise claim they know, they cannot really comprehend it. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that may have caught our attention. And after music we'll say our prayers for the day and the time of the year.
before we say our prayers for the day and the time of the year, just a reminder that if you'd like us to pray with you, then drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email. Check the show notes for the contact details. There are links there. If you click the link, it'll take you to where you need to go. Today, we've been asked to pray for a lady called Christine. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning first thanking you for allowing me to wake up. Thank you for allowing me to open my eyes, move my limbs, and for other parts of my body that are healthy and functioning. Thank you for allowing my friends, family, and other loved ones to arrive as well. Lord, for those whose last day on earth was yesterday, I pray that you would comfort their family members and friends with the sweet peace of your presence as they grieve the loss of their loved ones. Lord, as I begin this work day, I invite you, God, to fill my spirit with your presence. May your divine wisdom guide me through the day. Take away any forms of fear and anxiety because those feelings are not of you, God. I ask that you give me power and wisdom and grace throughout this day. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In our prayer for the time of the year, we are, all of us, wonderfully made. Young or old, weak or strong, we are able to both receive and give love, to be blessed and be a blessing to be singers of the angel's song and point to the one who gives us life. We are, all of us, wonderfully made. So we thank you, Creator God, that you love each and every one of us. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way. All the details for today's episode can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for the prayers and the music. And if you want to partner with Walking the Way, please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And for more information about me or the podcast itself, head to rayborrett.co.uk. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And don't forget, you can also listen to us on TuneIn and YouTube. My name is Ray, and so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue walking the way.